Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. For those of you who haven't been here before, hi, I'm Lori Hill. And on this channel, we talk about plastic surgery, cosmetic procedures, beauty and beauty standards. We also talk about skincare and celebrities. So if that sounds good to you, don't get FOMO, please subscribe. In today's video, we will be talking about buckle fat removal. Now I've gotten tons of requests from all of you to speak on this trend, which really isn't a trend, it's been going on for many decades, but I did want to give all of the creators a chance to speak before I did. Over the last few weeks, I've been seeing so many videos about how awful buckle fat removal is, how bad everyone looks with it, and I found myself disagreeing with a lot of these videos, but giving everyone the chance to speak has really helped inform me about the public opinion. I feel like this video will clear up some misconceptions on this topic. In this video, we'll talk about the best candidates for buckle fat removal, and I'll teach you how to figure out if you're the right candidate for this procedure. I'll also go over the actual buckle fat removal surgery, what recovery is like, how much it costs, and what you should expect in the future. Lastly, I am going to go through a list of celebrities who have allegedly had buckle fat removal, and I'll tell you if I think they're a good candidate or not, and I'll tell you what I think of their results. This should help you a lot in understanding the procedure better and just who is and who isn't a good candidate. Now I generally stay away from rating celebrities procedures, but in this case, I think there's a lot that can be learned from the different examples that I show. In any case, every celebrity, regardless of if their buckle fat removal was successful or unsuccessful, is beautiful. Let's get started. Let's talk about what buckle fat removal actually is. Buckle fat removal, also known as buccal lipectomy, is a cosmetic surgery procedure that involves removing excess fat from the cheeks to create a slimmer and more defined facial appearance. Now, it's typically recommended for people with naturally full cheeks in the buccal area, which I'll show you. Sometimes this buccal fat is genetic and sometimes it's gained because of excess weight gain. So many people just have naturally full faces, but they're not technically full in the buccal fat area. Now here's a great example of someone who has excess buccal fat to their face. Them having excess buccal fat does not mean they need to remove it. This full buccal fat appearance actually looks quite youthful and cute. Now here's an example of a face that's just full that isn't particularly full in the buccal fat area. Do you see the difference? Let me point to the buccal fat area. Do you see how the person with excess buccal fat has a slight bulge in that area? Now do you see how the person with a naturally full face is just voluminous throughout their face without any type of bulge in that area. Something that's very unique about buccal fat is it's quite hard to lose it through weight loss. If you do have a full buccal fat area, it will likely stay with you until old age. This is why it's hard to lose the buccal fat just by losing weight. Even if you gain the buccal fat through actual weight gain, now, good patient candidates for buccal fat removal are adults who are in good overall health and have realistic expectations for the procedure. It will not in and of itself make you look more model-esque or sculpted. That depends on other facial features that you already have. They should definitely be non-smokers as smoking hinders healing. People with full cheeks but full in the buccal fat area in particular. And of course, people who are unhappy with their facial appearance in the buccal fat area in particular. Now here's a way that you can identify if you're the right candidate for this procedure just based on the area you're dissatisfied with. If when you turn from the three quarters point of view, you see a bulge in this area right here, it's likely your buccal fat. But if when you're turned from three quarters, you just see a generally full cheek, it's not likely to be the buccal fat that you have actual issue with. It's more likely that you generally just have a lot of facial fat to your face, which is not a bad thing, and you will likely age a lot slower than everyone else. Remember that when you have more hollows, people may perceive you as older. Now, for a lot of people, they want to look more youthful, but that's not the case across the board. There are certainly many, many people who have had a very youthful and childlike face their whole lives who are ready to have a more mature looking face. 
And we can't discount those people just because it's more popular to look youthful. Perhaps you feel that having a more mature look would have people take you more seriously. And that's a very valid concern. Now let's talk about the procedure itself. Oftentimes, it can be done in office under local anesthesia, although many surgeons prefer that the patient be asleep when it's done. Now, generally, you'll get numbed, and then the surgeon will go in through an incision in your mouth and remove the buccal fat. Sometimes they'll just do a partial buccal fat removal, and sometimes it will be a full buccal fat removal, depending on what the patient and surgeon agree on. Now, one thing that's important to understand is whether you have full or partial buccal fat removal, the procedure is irreversible. Once the buccal fat is removed, you cannot put it back in its original area, which is the buccal area. Now, why is that? Because the buccal fat is a very deep structure. The actual buccal fat lays under other structures like muscle and ligaments. Putting back that buccal fat is not the same as just getting a fat transfer. Actually, going to put it back in would require direct vision, meaning they would need to pull your skin back and look at the structures directly. And no surgeon, to my knowledge, is willing to go to that extent to replace buccal fat. So keeping the irreversible quality of this procedure in your mind is very important before making the decision to get this procedure done. Now, how much does buccal fat removal cost? The price of buccal fat removal starts at about $2,500 and goes up from there. I've seen it as high as $10,000 and upwards. It just depends on the location of your surgeon and other factors as well. Now, as easy as this surgery sounds, it's critical you find an experienced surgeon to perform this surgery and not base your choice strictly on how much the surgeon costs. Now, most importantly, there are two parotid glands that sit right inside of each side of your mouth. These glands produce the saliva you need to keep your mouth wet and also help you in the initial digestion of your food. These are tiny ducts inside your mouth that the saliva comes out of, and these ducts sit right above the spot that the surgeon needs to get to to make that incision to get to your buccal fat pads. If the surgeon makes the incisions just a bit too high in your mouth, they can cut these ducts and permanently disable your ability to produce saliva. This could leave you with lifelong dry mouth. Now, another reason to choose an experienced surgeon has to do with the surgeon's artistic judgment. While doing the surgery, the surgeon can take out as much or as little buccal fat as they deem necessary. And that's quite a judgment call on the surgeon's part. If the surgeon takes out too little of your buccal fat pad, you won't barely notice any difference at all. Now, if that's the case, you can go back and get a little bit more removed, of course. But who wants another surgery, right? Now, on the other side of the coin, the surgeon may take out too much buccal fat, leaving you looking gaunt and unnatural. Both you and your surgeon have to really consider the future. Now, as we age, we all lose facial fat, even though we don't lose a ton of buccal fat. If you take out too much buccal fat though, you'll still end up looking a bit older than your age as you age, and that's something you should consider. You might look great while you're younger, but you may not like the effects of the surgery later on 10 years down the road. And like I said earlier, because this surgery isn't reversible, adding fat even superficially to the face will not resolve the gauntness near the buccal fat area. That's not a reason to not get the surgery, it's just something to consider. Will you be okay with looking slightly older than your age in the future? Now for people with an extreme childlike appearance, I would be betting that that answer is yes. Now remember, here are some qualifications that your surgeon should have. Board certified by either the American Society of Plastic Surgeons or the American Academy of Facial Plastic Surgeons. 
Now there are some oral surgeons who offer this procedure and you would want to make sure that they're board certified by the American Board of Maxillofacial Surgery. And of course, you wanna search for a surgeon who's very experienced in this procedure. When you have a consult with your surgeon, which should be in person, ask them how often they perform this procedure. Ideally, you want a surgeon who does this procedure at least once or twice a month if not more. There are some surgeons who perform the procedure even more than that, and they're generally in the larger cities. Let's do a pros and cons list of having buccal fat removal surgery. Pros, if done by the right surgeon, it's an extremely easy surgery with a quick recovery. It's a powerful procedure that gives a chiseled and sculpted look. It's relatively affordable for most people. The results are permanent. Cons, if too much fat is taken out, you may end up looking gaunt. As you age and you start to lose other facial fat, you may wish that you had more padding to the buccal fat area. There are rare complications like infection, nerve damage, damage to the parotid gland. So like any surgery, you should definitely be aware of the potential side effects. Now, buccal fat removal surgery can be done on its own or it can be done at the same time as other facial surgery procedures like under the chin liposuction or a neck lift. Now, it's often done surprisingly during a facelift procedure as young people are not the only people who become dissatisfied with their buccal fat pads. Oftentimes, older people can have ulcerated buccal fat pad areas that droop down and become quite prominent as they age. I'd like to welcome back Skillshare to the channel. Skillshare is an online learning platform that has thousands of classes taught by experienced instructors. This year, Skillshare is really leaning into helping people find new career possibilities. After the great resignation, we all learned that hustling and overworking culture just isn't ideal for our mental well-being or our happiness. With that in mind, Skillshare wants to show you a new vision of work. There are classes on productivity, creating your own creative business, and even how to create an amazing Instagram, TikTok, or your own YouTube channel. I took a class by the amazing Lily Singh. I was so excited to see her amongst the new Skillshare creators. Lily teaches a class called Social Media Success, Video Storytelling on YouTube and Beyond. If there's anyone who can teach how to storytell, it's Lily. Now, Lily talks about setting specific goals as a content creator by using your daydreams as your guide because your daydreams will tell you what your true goals are. You guys, I was so amazed by this class. If you're gonna take any class, take this one. Now, Lily talks about how she got the ideas for her videos just by being inspired in her daily life. There's so much in this class for the experienced content creator and the aspiring content creator. So if you've been thinking about maybe changing your career or even redefining what you're already doing, check out Skillshare. Click the link down below in my description box. The first thousand people to click that link below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare's membership. So click that link down below. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and an even bigger thank you to all of you who support my sponsors. Let's talk a bit about recovery from this surgery. After the surgery, your mouth might be a little bit sore from the numbing medication that was used, but it shouldn't be bad enough to need strong pain medicine. Now, most of the swelling from this surgery takes place for about a week afterwards. And this isn't the type of surgery where you need to take a bunch of time off because the swelling really isn't obvious. For most people, they just need a few days of time off from work. The doctor will likely give you an antibacterial mouthwash to use, and some antibiotics to prevent germs from causing an infection. You'll need to be extra careful while brushing your teeth as your mouth could be numb for up to a week. Now it will take about three months for all of the swelling to subside, but after three months, you should be able to see a more sculpted and slimmer look to your face. And depending on how much fat was removed, your results will either be dramatic or subtle. Now, if the procedure goes well and you were the right candidate for the procedure, it's actually a great thing that that it's permanent as the fat doesn't grow back. 
That being said, if you do gain a lot of weight after the procedure, your results may look a bit different. Let's look at Selena Gomez first. If you look at this before picture of her, you'll notice that she has a beautiful face that's also a little bit rounded. The buckle fat pad sits right below her cheekbone and adds to the roundness of her cheek. Now in this photo taken later, you can see where Selena has most likely had her buckle fat pad either removed or reduced through surgery. It gives her face a thinner and more chiseled look, but she doesn't look dramatically different. And this was a great finesse surgery for Selena. I would say in Selena Gomez's case, she was the perfect dead ringer candidate for buckle fat removal. Now, I think that Selena also has good cheekbone projection. I think she has good forward projection, and that helps a lot with the success of buckle fat removal surgery. Now let's go to Bella Hadid. Bella is another celebrity that has likely had her buckle fat pads operated on, along with other procedures that we've spoken about in her other videos. But let's focus on her cheeks. In these early before photos, you see that Bella had a round face that kind of hid her cheekbones. If you compare her after photos, you'll see that the area right below her cheekbones is now hollowed out a bit and it makes her cheekbones really pop and it gives her a very chiseled look a look that can almost look alien like but that could be beneficial to her modeling career looking different may have been of the utmost importance to bella and looking typical and everyday probably was lower on her list now with Bella, I believe that she wasn't a great candidate for buckle fat removal, but because of, first of all, her desire to look chiseled and sculpted, it really worked for her. I believe it was a risky procedure in her case because she didn't have excess buckle fat to remove. Bella had great cheekbone projection above the area where fat was removed. If you don't have a well-developed cheekbone, then I would not recommend this procedure. If your cheeks are projected because of facial fat rather than projected because of your bone structure, getting buccal fat removal may look a bit strange. In fact, it may look like you've got dents to your cheeks instead of looking sculpted and uplifted. In Bella's case, the risk worked out and she does look great afterwards. Now let's go to Zoe Kravitz. Now I think that Zoe was an ideal candidate for buckle fat removal. She starts out with a fuller cheek area as well as a strong jaw, but not an overly strong jaw. Now if you look, she does have forward cheek projection, which is key to having a good buckle fat removal result. In the after, when the buckle fat was removed, her actual cheek projection became more pronounced and that's what she was looking for. We also see a pronounced hollowness to her cheeks, which is another feature that I believe Zoe wanted to have. Prior to having buckle fat removal, Zoe had an overall full cheek structure. After having the buckle fat removal, her beautiful cheek bone structure was revealed. And I think this is the look that she was going for. Let's go to Leah and Michelle. Taking a look at Leah's photos, I noticed that she has a very strong jaw structure. Her cheek structure seems to come more from facial fat rather than actual bone projection. As far as the quality of candidate that Leah was, I would say she wasn't a good candidate for buckle fat removal. Now, after the buckle fat was removed, what I noticed is that there's more of an emphasis to the strength of her lower jaw. This can have a masculine quality to it, which there's nothing wrong with being a more masculine woman, but she may not have been going for that look. If we take a look at her cheeks, her lateral cheek looks more projected, but she doesn't have that forward projecting cheekbone. And removing fat from underneath a full fatty cheek looks more like it's dented in than naturally hollowed out, if that makes sense. So what we can learn from Leah is if your cheek projection comes mostly from fat and not from bone, it's not a good idea to get buckle fat removal done as you may end up looking gaunt or dented in. She's still a beautiful woman regardless. Chrissy Teigen. Now Chrissy was a great candidate for this procedure and she had a good result. 
Chrissy starts out with a fuller face, not just a full buckle fat pad. She also has great cheek projection. By removing the buckle fat, she not only looks a bit more mature, but she also looks sculpted and very model-esque, which is great because her career is modeling. Now we go to Amelia Hamlin. In her before photo, she has a beautiful full face. It's not quite full in the buckle fat area though. I'm struck by how evenly all of her facial flesh lays. Now in the after, what I see is a more pronounced jaw area. Now she may have also had some jaw augmentation, whether implants or just jaw filler. I'm struck by how much harder her face looks. She's definitely gained a sculpted look, but it's at the expense of looking harder. The reason she may not have been a good candidate for this procedure is because that most of her projection of her cheek looks like it's facial fat rather than bone structure. We see sort of a falling down of that facial fat. Remember that fat is also a supportive structure. So the buckle fat in her case may have been keeping that cheek high up on her face. She looks different, but she looks beautiful regardless. Dove Cameron. Dove was a great candidate for buckle fat removal. We see in the before photo that there is a definite bulge in her buckle fat area. So removing this buckle fat actually worked for her. And in Dove's case, because I believe that she's had cheek implants, she added in that bony structure that I think is required for the success of buckle fat removal, that she added in that bony cheek structure in the form of an implant, then hollowing out the area directly below the cheek implants by getting buckle fat removal really worked for her. I think that it gave her face a more sculpted look and it probably also helped her get different types of roles than what she was getting. So she was a great candidate with a great result. Margot Robbie. Now Margot is a less obvious candidate for buckle fat removal, but if we take a look at her younger photos, we do see a very full cheek area. I do see that she was probably looking for a slimmer looking face. And so when they removed or partially removed that buckle fat, her beautiful cheekbone structure was revealed and it made her cheeks look higher on her face and pronounced. Now remember her cheek structure comes from bone and not primarily from fat. And that's key here. Because it comes primarily from bone, she didn't need the support of her buckle fat to hold up that cheek. Now this is just my theory, so keep that in mind. She was a good candidate with a great result. Although a lot of people feel that she may have prematurely aged herself by hollowing out that cheek with buckle fat removal. Let me know in the comments what you think. Let's go to Emrata now, Emily Rajkowski. Emily was actually a good candidate for this procedure and she did have a good result, but she's lost a lot of weight since then. And remember that if you lose or gain a lot of weight, the results of the buckle fat removal will change too because it's the fat you're losing around the buckle fat removal. And for her, I think that she's just lost so much weight to her face that now she does look gaunt with the addition of this buckle fat removal. Had she have kept her buckle fat, she may not look as gaunt as she does with all the weight loss. Now, this isn't just my speculation. I don't know for sure that she's lost a lot of weight. I'm just going off of photos. So I think she was a good candidate with a good result. But then as we talked about, you have to think about the future. If you think you're gonna be in a profession that requires you to be really skinny or if for whatever reason you're gonna lose a bunch of weight, you should consider that before getting buckle fat removal surgery. We have Demi Moore. Demi was not an obvious candidate for buckle fat removal. I think she was a good candidate for it because it looks like maybe she had what we talked about earlier, that ulcerated buckle fat. I think she may have had buckle fat removal surgery at one point, whether it was early on in her career or later when she got that facelift that I speculated about. But unfortunately, it wasn't a good result. Now, I can't tell you why except to say that I think that she looks too gaunt. So it's possible that she had too much buckle fat removed. I do think in recent years though, she's softened up quite a bit. And as always, she's beautiful no matter what. Now let's finish up with a really good candidate for buckle fat removal, and that's Madeline Klein. Now Madeline starts out with a full cheek area and a very obvious bump out to her buckle fat. 
I think she might have had partial buccal fat removal, which really gave her a more sculpted look in the after without overdoing it. I think she was a great candidate with a great result. Now that we've gone through the buccal fat removal surgery process, the prices and the recovery, as well as looking at different celebrities who had good to not so great results, I think you're starting to see that you can't say that buccal fat removal is just horrendous and a bad decision across the board. I think you should be able to see that it really depends on how good of a candidate you are for the actual buccal fat removal. Now, a lot of surgeons have stopped doing this procedure, but they may not have stopped for the reasons you think they've stopped. Most surgeons are people pleasers, and because most people who want this procedure are not really great candidates for it, it's just easier for a surgeon to say that they don't do this procedure. So many patients are willing to try to convince the doctor to do the procedure because they want the procedure and don't realize that the doctor is actually saving them from a bad result by turning them down. So I think that's another factor in why a lot of surgeons won't do this procedure, if that makes sense. Let me know what you think of this procedure down below. Has this video helped shed some light on this procedure? Watch my other videos coming up next. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to visit my sponsor Skillshare. The link is down below. Thank you guys. Love you all. Bye. Bye. <laughs>